Good morning. Uh, thanks for joining me uh, early this morning uh, on, what is it, Tuesday, I think. Uh, some of us are a little uh, jet lagged, some of us may be a little hungover, but I uh, appreciate you being here to uh, hopefully learn a little bit uh, about um, MindMeld, Natural Language Processing uh, SDK, uh, and integrating it with WebEx um, stuff. We'll see here in a second. Uh, so my name is uh, David Stout. I'm a uh, developer advocate uh, in Cisco's DevNet organization. Uh, so I work uh, and kind of do a little bit of everything uh, and anything to help developers uh, learn about our APIs, learn them actually uh, how to actually use them, help them with issues, write sample code, uh, documentation, go to events like this. So um, really, um, I, I love coming to these events for the questions and the conversations with the developers. So feel free to uh, ask questions as we go uh, and then at the end. Um, but this is pretty cool technology. I had a lot of fun um, and learned a lot. Um, building the samples for this, so uh, let's dive into it. We got a limited amount of time. Uh, so we're going to talk about uh, friends um, in the uh, aspect of um, customized WebEx Assistant instances. We're going to talk about companions in the aspect of WebEx chatbots, uh, and then talk about how to uh, augment those to make those better. Uh, using natural language processing uh, and the MindMeld open source SDK. So if you uh, hadn't seen it yet, uh, in a WebEx meeting near you, uh, the WebEx assistant is available. Uh, that usually lives down here in the corner. Um, you can ask it to do transcriptions. You can ask it to capture meeting notes. Uh, it does a lot of kind of Alexa or Siri type uh, uh, voice driven commands inside a meeting. Uh, so instead of uh, fumbling for your laptop or your phone and looking for the re record button, uh, you can just say, OK, WebEx, uh, turn on recording. Uh, so it, uh, very much like Alexa or, or uh, other audio assistants like that, it can recognize uh, what you say in various languages. You can uh, phrase it in different ways. Uh, you can use you know, natural human language to uh, do stuff with this automation on the back end. Uh, the Assistant is also available on uh, WebEx devices. Uh, so the, the uh, desk devices, as well as the uh, in-room conferencing systems, uh, like the room kits, uh, et cetera, uh, they also have this capable, uh, capability built into them as well uh, to use the WebEx Assistant to do even more stuff. Uh, so you can do uh, device controls, you can turn the volume up and down, turn on different monitors, uh, place calls from the device, uh, book rooms, all of that stuff using natural interactive uh, voice commands. Uh, so very similar to Alexa, uh, except instead of uh, you know a little hockey puck that you probably got for free for opening a checking account, uh, you have to have this nice, not so free uh, Cisco desk equipment. But the capabilities for customizing these uh, skills are are similar. And there's the whole suite of uh, the devices that are supported for WebEx Assistant and custom development. Um, but of course, we wouldn't be talking about that in the DevNet zone if there wasn't an SDK for it. Uh, so just like for uh, other voice assistants, you can actually build custom WebEx assistant skills uh, using the tools, documentation, sample code, uh, and the SDK provided. Um, so anybody can get started developing uh, with WebEx assistant SDKs. Even if you have a free WebEx account, you can get access to all of the software and, and documentation to get started. Um, you will need, if you want to go to production, eventually a Cisco uh, a device, um, but there's a catch, catch to everything, right? Uh, so why would you want to do this? The main uh, thing I think is important is in this bullet right here. Uh, so if you're a uh, CEO, your chief uh, security officer, uh, et cetera, they have, they're in a conference room together and there's a voice assistant um, in there, uh, they don't want that to be Alexa in some, you know, some code that uh, somebody in IT uh, wrote or a third party. Uh, they're going to say, no, 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 no. We don't want anything listening like that. I'm already nervous about Alexa. I don't have one in my house myself for this very same reason. Um, but with the WebEx Assistant Skills Platform, you can build skills uh, that are entirely secure and private, right? So the code runs in your data center. You completely vet it. All the communication uh, to the WebEx device uh, is encrypted with the keys uh, that you hold. 
Uh, so even Cisco has no idea what audio is being uh, captured by the assistant, what you know, text is being sent back and forth. Uh, so it's a, a fully uh, secure and private implementation for your, your business. Uh, so that really opens up the possibility for uh, voice assistants that uh, just wouldn't be contemplated uh, from other kinds of devices. So what is uh, a skill, especially a custom skill? Uh, essentially, on the back end, you build a web server. Uh, you're going to get incoming requests from WebEx that say, uh, the user spoke these words that we detected, um, and then you give it a response back with some commands uh, as to what to do about it. Uh, so you can uh, give words back uh, to be uh, changed via text-to-speech. Uh, you can do, use other WebEx APIs to do operations on the endpoint, you know, turn the volume up or down or start recordings or switch, switch views or order pizza or turn on coffee makers that are in the room, whatever you want to do. So the level of experience and development you need essentially is back-end web development. If you can uh, do that, uh, you can implement uh, a skill quite easily. So uh, it's very easy, and uh, if you've used WebEx uh, chatbots uh, before or seen them demonstrated, typically what you do is you go you know, slash lights space on. Uh, so you give it a, a specific command. It has to be formatted in a specific way. Uh, and if you type it in wrong or backwards or you don't know what the commands are, you're kind of lost. So it's usable, but not particularly friendly or interactive. Uh, the idea is to combine uh, the basic concepts of interactive uh, natural, language, la natural language assistance with artificial intelligence, uh, NLP, natural language processing, uh, that can uh, really um, uh, analyze uh, the actual words and phrases and the way people uh, talk and speak and type, uh, parse that, analyze that, looking for pieces of information, correlations, uh, that match an internal model that you built. Um, and uh, based on all that artificial intelligence, it can actually make a pretty, uh, sometimes strikingly accurate uh, analysis of what the user wants to do, what the hell they're talking about, and what specifically they want to happen. Um, once that all gets parsed out into you know, definite variables, you can write code based on that. Uh, so you don't have to uh, try to parse the entire uh, aspect of human language yourself and your code, all you have to do are take a couple of incoming variables that come from the SDK. You know, what, what do they want to turn on? Is it a coffee pot? Is it a light? Is it the blinds? What do they want to do? They want to turn it on? Do they want to turn it off? Do they want the blinds up or down? Because that's very clear data to you, it's very easy to implement the back end code uh, to make that stuff happen. And we talked about bots. You're probably familiar with how they work. Not only can you do uh, textual output, but it's interesting that you can do uh, the adaptive cards, uh, which provides a UI. So um, bots can do that. All right, so MindMeld itself. This is an interesting project. Um, it uh, it's, uh, wasn't originally, I think, open source. Uh, it is now, but uh, this was built <clears throat> by a team of essentially PhD uh, artificial uh, intelligence and natural language processing um, professors. Uh, so it's, a, a, in, in the end, an extremely sophisticated, powerful, very customizable and extensible platform for doing this kind of uh, language analysis. Um, Cisco was looking for uh, a platform uh, to implement uh, their WebEx assistant. Um, and like this one so much, they, they bought the entire thing from all these guys. Uh, m many, most of which uh, still work there. Um, and so the, the, WebEx assistant, the WebEx assistant itself, the, the globally implemented, um, you know, highly performance secure uh, voice assistant is based on this same code base. Um, but they went ahead, and this I thought was kind of weird at the time for, for Cisco, they open sourced it uh, so that uh, our developers could also uh, use this same kind of very powerful um, NLP analysis to make really engaging, interactive uh, human language uh, bots uh, and, and, and um, voice assistants to integrate with WebEx. Uh, and so um, SDKs uh, 
Uh, SDK components were added to this uh, to integrate seamlessly uh, with WebEx bots. Um, there's an SDK now uh, with the new WebEx Assistant custom skills that uh, integrates seamlessly with MindMeld as well. Um, and we'll see uh, a quick demo about how these can work together. <clears throat> Uh, so this uh, MindMeld itself, it's a, it's a deep project, like I said. If you um, need a PhD topic uh, for your thesis, uh, you can find multiple uh, deep inside there. So there's lots you can do with it, it's very powerful. But if you use um, just the basic components that we'll look uh, at uh, in a second, um, it's quite approachable. Um, and there's, there are uh, good samples and demonstrations and projects that uh, can get you started. And then, you know, depending on how interested you are and how many PhDs you can buy, you can you know, build something that can rival the WebEx Assistant itself or Siri, et cetera. So it's uh, easy to get started with, um, but uh, extremely powerful uh, if you want it to be. So how do you actually use this thing? <clears throat> um, it's a Python SDK, at least uh, the main bindings are. Um, but uh, the idea behind the MindMeld uh, NLP SDK and, and a lot of NLP products that are out there, uh, and there, there are a bunch, um, uh, and I intend to play with some more too as well because uh, it would be interesting to be able to target different NLP platforms with the same uh, sample code. But the idea is, uh, uh, for this intents and purpose, we'll focus on these three things. There's domains. This is sort of the area of interest, right? Uh, so this ends up being a, a directory uh, in the project. But uh, for example, on this, this chart, um, maybe you're putting together a chat bot and an, an assistant that can provide info about your stores to customers. Okay? And intent. So these are the different kinds of operations um, that we need to figure out uh, that one, we can know how to handle. We have written code to handle them for. And two, we need to figure out if the end user is actually talking about one of these. Uh, so, uh, you know, they're probably going to want to say hello. How do I get started? What can you do? So we need to handle that scenario. Um, we need to handle a scenario where they ask for the store hours for a particular store location, and then maybe find the nearest store to them. So we get their address or whatever. We can say, hey, you're two miles from such and such location. And then the other key component is called entities, uh, and these are the details. What exactly are they talking about? So which store? by name, probably, uh, which, which date, right? So the hours are different today versus tomorrow versus this weekend. Uh, so the <clears throat> idea is to uh, build up this uh, mind map of domains, entities, and intents, um, bring in a bunch of uh, training data, which are example snippets of language uh, and definitions that uh, can help the AI engine parse all this stuff out. And we'll see how that works a little bit in a second. Uh, and then based on this, any incoming text can be matched against it uh, statistically uh, with that uh, sophisticated AI analysis. And hopefully what falls out of the bottom are those um, specific uh, pieces of information, the tokens. What exactly they want to do? So what subroutine do I call? What are they talking about? You know, which store, which hour? So what variables go into that subroutine? Uh, and then you do whatever processing needs to happen, hit whatever databases or third-party APIs to come up with a response. So you look up the store name in, in table A, you look up the hours in B, you put together a, a, a string text to send back up, and WebEx Assistant can, uh, or the bot can send that to the end user. And therefore, you can uh, build an interactive uh, conversation versus you know, static commands. So uh, as we'll see in the project, the, the mind map here maps to a directory structure, typically, uh, in a mind meld project. So we can see there's a, a folder uh, where the, the domains are. So we have a store info domain that maps to that. We have all our in intents. So there's different folders that hold data about you know, getting the store hours, about getting finding the nearest store. Uh, and then there's entities. Um, where we go to define you know, what specific stores there are by name. OK. Let's see this stuff in action. <clears throat> Tried to make this visible, but we'll see what we can do here. So uh, here we have the, the live directory structure we talked about in this uh, software project. Uh, so this is actually a, a combination 
um, just to give you an overview here, a combination of two sample projects um, and, and SDK templates. Uh, one that came out of the MindMeld SDK and one that came out of the WebEx Assistant SDK. Um, and I put them together. Um, because, as it turns out, um, once you build that mind map, once you train uh, mind meld on uh, the domains and tents and entities uh, that you want to do, um, you can use that uh, same model for multiple um, interfaces. Uh, so you can use a bot, you can use an assistant, uh, you could hook this up to other services, uh, et cetera, right? So you could have a web page uh, query, you could use Siri itself, you could build an Alexa uh, in, uh, a skill that uses the same uh, trained uh, NLP engine, <coughs> which I thought was cool. So uh, you'll see there's a, there's a main uh, .py that, uh, that came from the assistant SDK, and there's an app.py that came from the bot SDK. Um, <clears throat> but on the left, we can see our directory structure for this particular sample. Uh, so this particular sample is home automation. Right? So you can speak out loud, um, not so necessarily home, let's say uh, the conferencing room automation. You can ask it to turn the lights on or off. You can ask it to open or close the automatic blinds. Uh, you can ask it to you know, turn the coffee pot on. So that kind of stuff. So there's a, a greeting intent. So we talked about most people when they start using this, they'll say, you know, hi, what can you do? Or hello, you know, what's up? Um, and we, need, we want to be able to handle that, right? So there's a separate folder called greet that holds the greet, greeting intent. And in here, there's a train.txt. So let's see what that looks like. So in here uh, is a huge list of all kinds of examples of greetings. So uh, there's hundreds, thousands of variations of all kinds of way to say hello. And all these came uh, out of the SDK itself as sort of a sample, right? So, uh, and this is where your, uh, <clears throat> your bot or your assistant gets its you know, home spun appeal. Uh, so you can uh, ask it hello in all kinds of different ways, and it's extremely good at recognizing that greeting. Uh, so the AI um, analysis will uh, look at the incoming message, uh, compare it against all these variations, and with an extremely high degree of precision, say, hey, this person is trying to greet us. So that's uh, kind of the, the way these training files work. So uh, for the smart home situation that I wrote, and there's some training text that's a little bit more interesting uh, and a lot smaller. I only put 14 instances in here. So it's extremely bad at recognizing um, uh, this particular intent. Uh, but the idea is you kind of state things differently, right? So you can turn off the X, the appliance. Um, stop the X, cancel the X, you know, uh, douse the light. Uh, a couple different variations on how we expect people to um, let us know that they have uh, this intention. All right, so we do the, the same thing for turning the appliances off. And then under entities, we uh, simply list the uh, specific entities that we're willing to deal with. So uh, blinds, light, coffee maker. So if someone says, turn the Keurig on, eh, we're not going to know what they're talking about. But keep it simple. <clears throat> Once the uh, analysis engine uh, uses this training data, it's going to end up calling, let me open these up side by side. Uh, these are snippets of code from uh, the bot uh, application and then the WebEx Assistant custom application. Um, and as you hopefully can see here, the idea is you, as an application, um, get called with this function. You're going to get the domain that was figured out. We're in the smart home domain. Somebody wants to turn an appliance on, and the entity that they're asking about is going to be the, the appliance name or the appliance variable. And then from there, we can do our custom code. So if they're talking about blinds, we can do X. If they're talking about the coffee pot, we can do Y. We can call back end APIs. We can do database lookups. We can do whatever we want. And then at the end, we figure out what we want to say in response. Right? So we say, OK, the light is now on. We send that back. And the SDK handles propagating and displaying all that back up to the user of the device. 
So the WebEx Assistant skill is very similar, uh, almost identical. Uh, it's a little bit different, but you get the domain, you get the intent, you get the entity, uh, you process based on that. Um, and the way you build the response is a little bit different because there's a little more you can do. Um, there's actually uh, some device controls that you can do. Uh, so you can uh, have the, the response only displayed in text on the device, or you can have it speak it out loud. Sometimes you may not want that to happen. Um, but the idea is that using the same training data, uh, using the same backend technology, so in this case, Python and Flask um, in a web server, uh, these are both running uh, in, you know, listening to separate ports as web servers uh, in this in instance. Using standard technology, you can easily uh, implement multiple interfaces to this natural language processing engine. So in the end, uh, you get uh, a bot. So I have a mind meld bot. I can uh, greet it. Uh, it can give us an answer based on the greeting. We can say, turn the coffee maker on. It can process that, uh, do what it ever needs to do on the back end to turn the coffee maker on and give us a response. And then similarly, and since I wasn't able to fit one of those big uh, conference devices in my suitcase, uh, there is a browser-based uh, kind of test tool uh, framework so you can uh, speak. Uh, using your microphone uh, and speaker, uh, you can see it happening here. Uh, so I can say, uh, tell home, turn the light on. All right. So uh, the same response comes back. Um, if I get tired of talking in my mic, I can type the, I can type it in uh, just using uh, my keyboard here. Um, but you can see that uh, it's pretty easy to build, uh, like I said, interactive natural language uh, interfaces using WebEx assistance on the devices uh, as bots. You can use the same um, mind meld engine uh, in, in a, a knowledge base or a help uh, assistant U, uh, UI in your product, uh, on your web page, in your mobile app. Um, and you know, the smarter you can make this engine in one place, the smarter it gets everywhere. So let's see. That's all the time we had. Um, I found this really interesting. Um, the, uh, I need to package up the combined set. So that, like I said, the, uh, the WebEx Assistant SDK has samples on how to do that. Uh, there's plenty of uh, learning material from DevNet on WebEx bots and how to do that. But uh, putting them together uh, had a couple of uh, quirks that I would like to capture in a sample project. Um, so I'll be publishing that, I hope, shortly. But um, yeah, uh, cool stuff. It was very interesting to me. I um, hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, uh, catch me afterwards. Um, there is a dedicated WebEx uh, IM space associated with this talk. Uh, so if you open up the, the event app, um, look for the session. You can join yourself into that room uh, and ask your questions there. Um, it'll make it easier for me to share links and documents and sample code and things like that. So thank you very much. Any questions right off the top? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so there's, there's a ton of variables that you can tweak um, and uh, use, you know, fuzzy, fuzzy, fuzzy logic analysis uh, in the engine. You can turn that on and configure it and give it all kinds of parameters. Uh, that can handle that kind of uh, uh, thing, but that you know, I'm not maybe not smart enough to do that uh, off the bat. Uh, but uh, there are uh, there's tons of there's a huge amount of documentation for the MindMeld project, uh, so you can figure out how to do all that stuff um, uh, on its own. All right. Well, one thing I like to mention is that. Um, you can build this, and, and it does what it does, but there will always be people that have problems with it. And there's nothing more frustrating than you know, getting on the phone to use someone's interactive voice uh, assistant, and it, it messes up. So keep, keep working on it. If, some, if some, something doesn't work, log that, look at why it didn't work, and update your training data uh, so that it gets better over time. 
Um, and in fact, there are facilities built into the MindMeld SDK that can help with that, that can automatically uh, capture uh, things that, that it is not able to anal analyze and automatically learn about them uh, and add to the training data, which is really cool and kind of beyond the scope of this, but. All right, thanks a lot and enjoy the rest of your morning and welcome to Cisco Live. <laughs>